16 to 17 until the last two of last year. The Oilers won those. Tonight, it's round one in the Battle of Alberta later from Scotiabank Saddledome here in the Stampede City. But first up, the New York Rangers host the Toronto Maple Leafs in New York out of the gate with just the one victory so far. Has there been a better goalie in hockey? Actually, there's a neat wrinkle. There's a connection between New York and Calgary. Elliot will have that after his sit-down feature with Mr. Lundqvist. This is the night it all started, the first standing ovation, the first cheers of his name. The coining of King Henrik. Now a Vesna winner, the backbone of a Stanley Cup contender on North America's grandest stage. I, I know how much you love the word star. <laughs> so what's it like to be a star here in New York City? Well, first of all, hockey isn't that big in the U.S. We have a lot of fans in New York, but the thing with New York, though... There's so many people that come in here, they're tourists. Uh, they don't know what's going on in the city. So if you run into 10 people here, I would say five are tourists. Mm -hmm. Three people don't follow hockey. Mm -hmm. So maybe two out of 10 know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's it, tops. The organization, first of all, is class. <laughs> That's one, one on 15 now. <laughs> Lundquist rolls his eyes at the word star, but that's what he is, and other beloved New York athletes know it. He's huge. You know, uh, he's the backbone to the to the Rangers. You know, everything had to pass through him. Uh, as he go, the success of the Rangers go. Always impeccably dressed, heavily involved in the team's Garden of Dreams charity, jamming with good friend John McEnroe, co-owner of the restaurant Tiny's and the bar upstairs. Hockey will always be number one, no question. It, it will be your focus, but I always need something to kind of, something that takes my mind of hockey. Thank you, the NHL, for ending your lockout. And thank you, New York Rangers goalie Henrik Lundqvist, for celebrating by coming on our show and playing Sweet Child of Mine on the guitar. What doesn't this guy have I don't have think, yeah, I mean, it's annoying, it is. <laughs> The guy's so damn good looking, and uh, he's sort of that GQ guy. But, you know, he's he's humble about it. He's got a humility. What you see is what you get, in a way. You just don't see the, the degrees of, of what you're seeing. You don't see how intense he is or how dedicated he is or how long it takes him to comb his hair. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take him to comb I'm his hair? I'm thinking a little bit longer than he would admit. <laughs> I always wear a hat when I play tennis. I don't know how much he knows about that, but uh, he, he's a funny guy. Lundqvist stopped and still loses the score, and the Devils are going to the Stanley Cup final. He may be friendly and accommodating, but he's also a fierce competitor who cannot stand to lose. McEnroe, very similar, reached out after last season's playoff loss to the Devils, knowing how awful Lundqvist would feel. What did you say to him when you reached out to him? You want to go jam? <laughs> yeah, let's go play guitar and not think about this. I'm an intense guy, and he probably sees that, and, and it's probably something that has given me a lot of inspiration over the years to try to get better and, and try to win. You um, have worked very hard to control your temper over the years. Is there a favorite Henrik Lundqvist temper tantrum story that you that you tell? Well, there's a few locker rooms around the league that have, you know, holes in the wall or, or, or in the bench. Do you visualize yourself holding the Stanley Cup? Oh, yeah. How often? Um... I don't know how often, but it, it happens. You can ask Messier uh, when they won the Stanley Cup uh, how the city will put you on the top and just keep you there. I know that there's an emptiness, uh, and it, you know, a lot of players don't deserve that, uh, and they feel unfulfilled. In way. And I'm definitely pulling for them big time. I mean, I think it's finally, you know, this next couple years, it's, uh, it's time to do it. I've always been a big dreamer, and, and, and you know, 
I set goals, but I also see myself down the road to, to accomplish things that um, you know, I've been dreaming about for a long time. Well, the connection to Calgary is he was drafted in that city in the year 2000. He had to sit there for 205 picks until his name was taken, but it worked out, Kevin, beautifully. You were his teammate. What have you seen as a difference now? I've seen so much more maturity in him. Just the way in which he reacts with his teammates, the way he connects with the guys, he appreciates the guys playing in front of him. And not at the cost of him being great, but when he first came in, I could tell you a couple stories. One in particular where he yelled at Yager after a shootout loss, and I was like, oh my God, you can't yell at him. That's Yager, Yager, you can't say that. And Yager had missed on a shootout attempt, so I think he's really matured a lot. And hey, if you hear John McEnroe talk about how intense he is, that tells you everything you need to know right Six weeks we were in New York. How many people thought Hank looked like me? Remember that? <laughs> uh, I think a big fat zero. Days deep in his net, that's how confident he is. All right, calling the game tonight, and I think people will agree with that big fat zero. Jim